Hello, and welcome to this fourth lesson at Learning Nob Omniscope. In this lesson, we're going to get in and focus on histograms. What are they? How do they work? And how you're going to be able to utilize them to get more information out of your images than you have before. Now, to wrap this lesson up, we're going to talk a little bit about CIE plot, but let's just jump right into Nob Omniscope and get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Nob Omniscope. As always, we're greeted by the Connect To window. I'm just going to simply navigate over to Video File. I'm going to select the video file that I currently have located on my desktop. We are going to call up our playback controls, and I am going to pause. Now, I already have a layout already set up with a few different histograms that we are going to be working with. Now, don't worry if you don't currently don't... Now, don't worry if you don't have a histogram currently mapped anywhere in your layout. You can always navigate up to scopes, navigate down to histogram, call up the RGB histogram, and then dock it wherever you'd like to dock it, or simply just float it like I'm going to do right now so that we can talk a little bit about what exactly a histogram is. Now, if you're familiar with post, color grading specifically, or even production like the new Blackmagic cameras, you're probably familiar with a histogram or at least have seen it before. Now, one thing that I love about these lessons is that they really get me to get in depth with these scopes and really get a good understanding of exactly what they did. Because to be honest, I've seen a histogram in Photoshop, I've seen it in a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, but I really have never paid much attention to it really until now. What a histogram basically is, is it's a scope that's going to show you exposure basically from the dark to the light, from left to right, with the amount of pixels being represented in the y-axis. So basically exposure on the x, amount of pixels on the y. Now you're probably thinking, well, I don't really quite get what that means. And to be honest, when we're taking a look at an RGB scope like this, it can be a little confusing to understand exactly what I meant by that and how we're going to read this scope. But once I break the scope down into the sum of its parts, as you can see here, it's going to make a lot more sense. Now, the first thing that I do want to point out is that you do have access to a whole bunch of different histograms inside of Nob Omniscope. If I right click on this scope and I navigate down to histogram mode, you'll see that I have a few options. I have RGB, which is the one we're currently looking at, Luma, Hue, and saturation. What I'm going to do with the RGB scope is I'm just going to drag it right down here below our video image and I'm just going to dock it right here and we're just going to give ourselves a little bit more space just so that we can have all the histograms on the screen at the same time. Now one thing I also want to point out about the RGB histogram is that we can even split this up into the sum of the parts and see just the R, the G, and the B. Now, what I also want to point out is that you'll notice that I have a Luma histogram, an RGB histogram that I have here, as well as a saturation histogram. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this histogram because I already have an RGB histogram over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to navigate down to mode, and I'm going to change this to hue. Now, you're going to see why I'm doing this in just a second. What I basically now have is a layout that I could navigate up to layout, come down to save layout as, and save it as a new, in this case, histogram layout. So let's talk again a little bit just about what I talked about before, about exposure versus the amount of pixels. And the perfect example and the perfect histogram to use is the Luma histogram. Now think of it this way. If this scope represents basically from black to white, what we'd be looking at is our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. And we can see that very visually as we know by using masks inside of Omniscope. Now, up until this point, I've talked really about masks when we've been getting in and talking about them inside of the source signal. But as we also know, we can get in and we can mask out areas of the shot by simply clicking on any one of the scopes and simply dragging it out. Now you'll see that basically what I've done here is isolated all of our shadow content. You'll see basically from about zero to roughly about 33. Now again, this is just being very rough here. We'll take this up to about here to look at the midtones, and then we have the highlights. Now, of course, if we wanted to talk about the amount of pixels, if I just highlighted this area here, you'll see that we have a ton of pixels that appear on the screen, more 
pretty much than at any other given area when we're looking at exposure, all right? Now, let's talk about this scope here, which is actually our hue scope, not our RGB histogram. Now, this is something I wanted to point out. It's more so specifically to the histogram scopes than anything else, because we can have all these different scopes of which a lot of them look the same. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to differentiate what's what unless you always place things in a very specific order. But what you have the ability to do is to simply navigate into the settings at any time. And I'm just gonna navigate over here and I'm just gonna call this the hue histogram. I'm gonna close this and you'll now see that it is actually named properly. So there's no confusion as to exactly what this scope does. Luminance, hue, saturation, as well as RGB. Now what I should do here, since we're sticking with that trend, is I should just call this RGB histogram. And I'm going to close this out. Now, take a look. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. One, right along the bottom here, you'll notice that we have a bar going from black to white, which is representing what this scope is showing us, luminance. With hue, you'll see that basically what we have is the color wheel. Same with luminance down here and luminance across the RGB scope. So this is a great way to quickly get in and figure out what each of these scopes is showing you without actually having to know what the actual name of the scope is. Now, much like I had done with the luminance, getting in and taking a look at the hue for things like skin tones, for example, you can get in and just select a specific area here to highlight just that section of the hue. Now I'm just going to go a little bit wider here. Now, of course, you'll notice that as soon as I let go, the mask disappears because as we learned in a previous lesson, if I was to hold shift down at any time, I can simply drag through and I can let go. And now you'll see that that mask specifically for the hue histogram roughly getting in and talking about skin tones can now be displayed on the screen. And I'm even told what the hue range is up here in the source signal window. Now, what's also very cool when we talk about masking inside of the histogram specifically, is that what we now also have the ability to do, for example, let's talk about the luminance as well as the hue. So for example, if I wanted to isolate this range of the luminance here, I can again hold shift, isolate just that area. So now you'll see we're just looking specifically in the shadows and now I can really get in and start to isolate very specific parts of the shot. Now you'll see what I did to remove the mask from just that scope was I clicked anywhere and it didn't remove it from the hue. If I wanted to go more towards the midtones, there we go. But now for me, what I was doing when I was playing around earlier was I was looking specifically at the red of our wife's shirt. And what I did is I just navigated right down here and I wanted to get really specific as far as the red went. And you'll notice that what you can do here, if you really want to get it looking the way that you want right there, and then we can come in here to really specify. Now, of course I could be more precise, but as you can see, you can get in now and really isolate the area of that color. In this case, the red of her shirt, by simply getting in and utilizing the masking capabilities inside of Omniscope. Now, one thing I love about Omniscope is that not only is it a fantastic tool, but it's also a fantastic learning tool as well for you to easily get in and now start to understand how all of these different colors are starting to work together so you can get in and isolate things. For example, if the client took a look at, let's just say the white of the fence in this image and said, wow, that." It doesn't really look that white. You know, what's sort of going on with that white color? What we have the ability to do, of course, utilizing masks in the main window, is I can isolate a specific part of this fence that we know is white, but take a look at what's happening at it over here inside of the hue histogram. Now I'm just gonna hold shift when I actually do this. There we go. And now that I've done that, I can see how skewed over towards blue this white color actually is. 
Now, a couple other things that I do want to point out here. As we know, with all of the different scopes, we have a whole bunch of settings that we can get in and easily adjust. Now, one of them specifically I want to show you with the actual RGB scope not split up. There we go. Let's use this scope right here because many people that come from an application like Photoshop are very familiar with histograms, but not quite at looking at them in a fashion like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the RGB histogram and I'm going to navigate down to our settings. All right, I'm just going to bring the settings right down here just to make it a little bit easier. And you'll notice that we have the ability, depending on how we want to dock things, to adjust whether our histogram is going to go from left to right horizontally or in this case, vertical. All right, and you'll notice that as we adjust that, we can then even adjust whether it's going left to right or right to left. Now, the one that I really want to show you is in here in appearance. And it's really the first two specifically, pure RGB colors and mix the RGB channels. Now, if I choose pure RGB, you'll notice that the colors immediately switch to be actual red, green, and blue. However, they look like they are stacked on top of each other. What we also have the ability to do is to mix those channels to really get in and see exactly what colors are being created by saying mix R, G, and B. And now you'll notice that the green and the red will now combine to be yellow. We now have white in here as well. So we now have the ability to get in and make this scope more like a Photoshop scope than ever before. So if you're coming from an application like Photoshop, you can set these scopes up to look exactly the way that you're accustomed to to make sure there's no downtime in your workflow. All right, so that's basically histograms in a nutshell. And what I want to do now is talk just briefly about CIE plot. So let's navigate up to our scopes. I'm going to come down to CIE plot and we're talking about chromacity. We're talking about color with this scope. Now what's important for me to point out to you right now is in the upper right hand corner, you'll see that we are working in Rec 709 color space or more specifically, we are viewing a video signal coming through NOB Omniscope in Rec 709. Now, what's important to keep in mind about Rec 709 is that it is pretty much the standard for HD broadcast television. Now, I want to draw your attention here. We have two triangles happening here. Well, I say what two triangles. We have one triangle and sort of a domed shape here. What this domed shape represents is all colors that are visible to the human eye. What the triangle represents is the area that we have available to us in the Rec 709 color space. This is why you'll notice that when we go from Rec 709 to, for example, Rec 2020, when we're getting into, you know, HDR and all of this type of stuff, suddenly we go from having what I jokingly say muted colors into this unbelievably vibrant color world. This is where you'll really notice this in the CIE plot. You'll notice that I can actually come down and make available the Rec 2020 color space and take a look at how much more color space becomes available to us with this outer triangle now. So what this basically, what this scope does is gives you the ability to see exactly what is going on with the color in the given color space that you happen to be working with. All right, that about wraps things up for this lesson. In our next lesson, we're gonna talk all about performance, how to adjust the settings to improve performance, troubleshooting, measuring, and how to improve it.